Good day. Thank you for tuning in to this 2019 General Election Candidate Forum for Olympia City Council position number one, the mayor. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and the Thurston Community Media. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new vo voters, works to get out the vote, studies issues, and then advocates for its position with governing bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of the age 16 and up. I'm Annabelle Kirshner from the League, and I'll be moderating this forum for candidates for Olympia Council position number one, Mayor. They are um, uh, Cheryl Shelby and Nathaniel Jones. For this forum, each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. Then I will ask questions in alternating order. The first person asked the question will have two minutes for a response, followed by one minute from the other candidate. There will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We'll begin with opening statements from the candidates, beginning with Cheryl Shelby, and then followed by Nath Nathaniel Jones. You have two minutes. Hi, I'm your Olympia Mayor, Cheryl Selby. I'm excited to run for re-election because I'm proud to be an Olympian. I intentionally chose to move here to raise my family over 25 years ago. I love this community and I'm hopeful for its future. I'm running for re-election because I'm not done creating the vitality we all desire for our city. There's a lot at stake over the next four years and I'm ready to fight for the health and safety of Olympia while balancing competing priorities. I feel that I'm best qualified to do that because I bring a unique perspective to all my decision making. I'm the only one on council that has owned a retail business downtown, and my additional experience includes decades of volunteer and service on multiple nonprofit boards that related to affordable housing, the local arts, child safety, and the economy. I'm also the only council member that has worked for the city that I now serve as an elected official. All told, I've dedicated a quarter century to enhancing the wonderful appeal our town holds, not only for visitors, but also upholding the livability for our residents. Thanks to you, my campaign is off to an amazing start. I'm honored to have the support of a vast array of bipartisan elected officials, every current mayor in Thurston County, the Olympia firefighters, numerous trade unions, and many of your friends and neighbors. I've also received more individual contributions than any other candidate, and my supporters have knocked on thousands of doors with me. You can visit my campaign, electcharlselby.com, for a thorough list of my policy statements and a complete list of endorsements. Yes, we have major challenges facing our city, but I believe that my powerful blend of public, private, nonprofit, and now elected experience gives me the tools necessary to solve these issues in a collaborative and strategic manner. I'd appreciate your support for my re-election campaign in, no, in the November 5th general election. Thank you. Nathaniel, you have two minutes. Thanks, Annabelle. I wanna start by thanking the League and also Thurston Community Media for holding this video forum I think it's really valuable to be able to speak directly to the citizens of Olympia. My name's Nathaniel Jones and I'm running for mayor of Olympia. I'm very interested in the economic vitality of our community and the opportunity to grow jobs. But I mostly wanna focus on those issues that the citizens of Olympia have told me they're most concerned about. And those are the negative impacts of homelessness, homelessness itself and the suffering of folks who are caught in poverty, and then also the skyrocketing price of housing in our community. These are not new issues. These are issues that have not been adequately addressed. I'm motivated to run for mayor because I feel as though we need bold action on these and other issues. As we move forward, I'll be able to lay out some position statements for you to show you where my positions are on these issues. My background is uh, training at, in community and regional planning, and then I've spent my career working in transportation and land use planning, in public budgeting, and in infrastructure development. These are the core services of a city government. I have the background that's needed to take Olympia forward. 
I also have served on the council for two terms, and so I know how policy development works. I'm Nathaniel Jones. I'm running for mayor. I'd appreciate your vote on November 5th. Thank you, Nathaniel. We will have four questions. The first question will go to Cheryl, followed by a one-minute response from you, Nathaniel, and then you'll have the second question, and so on. So, Cheryl, the first question. Beginning in 2016, the city has granted four multifamily dwelling tax eight-year exemptions for market rate housing in the downtown core worth over $3 million over an eight-year period. How do you harmonize these exemptions with the loss of income for needed city services? How do you propose to resolve these issues? Thanks, Annabelle. So you're referring to the multifamily tax exemption that the city of Olympia has put in place about 15 years ago to help jumpstart some development downtown. Uh, we'd been 30 years without any, any type of private investment in residential housing downtown. Uh, so we felt that that was one tool in our toolbox to encourage uh, some you know, movement in that direction because we are in the middle of a housing crisis. So we finally got some action since 2016, but it was like 10 years before that happened. So uh, we're looking at that in our land use and environmental um, uh, Count, City Council um, has a land use and environment committee that is looking at the eight year tax exemption to see if we have enough proof of concept to see if we can modify that. I um, also wanna look at the 12 year multifamily tax exemption, see how we can encourage that for more affordable housing. That is a 12 year exemption for affordability. And um, we haven't had much, um, much movement in, in that area for that exemption. Um, I, I feel very confident that we will be able to balance the needs of not just the, um, the supply uh, to balance the, the need for housing. Uh, that's the economy that, um, you know, the basic 101 that, you know, supply and demand. And so we're definitely short on supply and whatever we can do to encourage more residential housing, we need to do it. Thank you, Cheryl. Nathaniel, one minute for a response. Great. Well, I think that Cheryl laid out the basics of what the multifamily tax exemption is supposed to do. It's supposed to stimulate residential development within a defined district downtown. I think the way to look at it is it's an eight-year period of a tax exemption beginning in the ninth year, and for the life of that building, that investment, taxes will flow into the city, and those are taxes that likely uh, revenues that likely wouldn't have been there without the tax exemption. It's been interestingly su successful, and we have stimulated residential development. It has been an investment of our city to make that happen. It's time to reevaluate the exemption at this point and see whether we're getting what we really need. I sit on the Land Use Committee, and we are bringing forward some recommendations on adjustments in order to make more um, requirements of developers who want the tax exemption. I think there'll be a healthy debate about just what should be included. Thank you, Nathaniel. So the se you, second question goes to you, and then Cheryl, you'll have one minute for a response. During, and the question, during the recent legislative session, the Olympia City Co Council urged state legislators to enact lo state laws limiting the ability of citizens to legally challenge certain city ordinances they believe to be illegal and detrimental to their neighborhoods. Do you support this kind of legislation, and if so, why? Well, the city of Olympia joined with other cities across the state in order to work with our legislature to make some adjustments to the Growth Management Act. When cities were moving forward with policies that reflected the goals of the Growth Management Act, the legislators, legislature determined that it was worthwhile in order to streamline the process and not allow for ongoing uh, frivolous litigation. Uh, and so uh, I'm glad that the city moved forward with that. Um, I think that it's important to look at what the goals of the Growth Management Act are and what that means to the city of Olympia. Our comprehensive plan has called for us to become a more compact city and to encourage infill housing. And that's what we're moving to do. Uh, we have run into some snags uh, in implementation 
And we're hopeful uh, that this legislative action can help us through that process. I think what's important for people to know about Olympia's initiatives for infill housing is that actually they're fairly modest. Our best projections show that we'll get about 50 houses a year, 50 living units a year, out of the changes that we are implementing. Uh, I think some folks have some real concerns about a, a, a high-rise building going into their neighborhood. I really feel that these concerns are unfounded, and I'm proud of the work that Olympia is doing in order to provide more housing in our community. We need more housing, and we need more housing affordability. This is a major issue in Olympia, and one that I would like to lead forward. Uh, and so I'm pleased that we've made some small steps forward in this area, but more compact development is the direction we need to be headed. Thank you. Cheryl, one minute for a response. Could you repeat the question, please? Yes, certainly. During the recent legislative session, the Olympia City Council urged the state legislator to enact state laws limiting the ability of citizens to legally challenge certain city ordinances they believe to be illegal and detrimental to their neighborhoods. Do you support this kind of legislation, and if so, why? Thank you. Uh, yes, I do. Our council voted 7-0 to support the missing middle ordinances uh, that are now being held up in, uh, in court. But the House Bill 1923, which I believe is what you're referencing, we did speak in support of because it would help other communities. Uh, we're being a leader in this area, but it would help other communities that follow us to uh, create more sensitive infill in established neighborhoods. It seems frightening to think about change within single family housing zoning, but it's important that we look at the past actually to, to move forward. And up until right after World War II, a lot of neighborhoods were built with more flexibility around zoning. Uh, there's in, in South Cap is a great example. There's duplexes, fourplexes, there's uh, apartment buildings on Capitol Way within a block of single family homes and, and um, no additional parking requirements. And so somehow it's, it used to work and I think it can work again. And it's something we need to be able to create flexibility. Thank you, Cheryl. Our third question, and Cheryl, you will have two minutes and then Nathaniel, you have one minute to respond. How can the city influence developers to require innovative eco-building designs that go beyond the low impact guidelines and include elements such as common areas that protect our watersheds and that preserve a neighborhood character? Thanks, Annabelle. So you referenced our low impact uh, design d development requirements that we recently adopted uh, through our land use policies. Again, we were a leader in that. So going beyond that at this point um, would be, I think, premature to require additional um, green building within the whole city. We are working currently on uh, looking at doing an eco district pilot project around the library, we have a piece of property there that some local uh, citizens and, and advocates are encouraging us to use that as a pilot so that we can show a proof of concept and then use that to spread it out into other areas. So uh, looking at eco districts is something that is top of mind for this council, uh, but we wanna scale it in a way that's actually um, implementable. Nathaniel, one minute for a response. Yeah, I appreciate this question because I think that we have significant concerns about how development moves forward and its impact on the environment. I agree with Cheryl. Olympia has been a leader in this area. We've actually received awards for our development standards and their environmental sensitivity. Having said that, these are critical issues. Puget Sound is impacted by runoff and stormwater um, pollution which needs to be addressed. We're moving forward with low income, or I'm sorry, with low impact development standards that have been in place now for a few years. And we're seeing real progress on that front. We need to continue to explore what can be done in this, in this area. New development meets some fairly stringent energy codes in Olympia. And we also require uh, tree plantings and other sorts of green infrastructure as a part of our development requirements. Thank you, Nathaniel. And so we're now at the fourth question that goes to you, Nathaniel. Where do things stand now in the investigation of the 2018 death of Yvonne McDonald? 
Given that the case has not been solved, what steps should the city be taking to ensure that the public and the black community in particular is kept updated as well as ensuring that justice will be done? Well, thank you. That's a question that is before our community. I appreciate you asking it. Uh, the investigation is still open, and because of concerns of our community, Olympia has added uh, a new detective to the case and is advancing the investigation. We're staying closely connected with family members to make sure that we have an understanding of what their concerns are and other members of the community. Uh, we are very open to input, but I think the critical piece here is to say that the city is would really appreciate anyone coming forward with information about Ms. McDonald's unfortunate death. We're all upset and concerned about how this could have happened and what might have happened. We don't know whether there was foul play involved. We don't have good information at this point. And unfortunately, most of our investigation has come to uh, without any real good leads at this point. The investigation has gone on for some time. It was rigorous. We are continuing to look for more leads in order to try to respond. I think the city has been uh, open in its process, and I intend to make sure that we continue to be transparent as we move forward. And one minute for a response, Cheryl. I, I don't have a lot to add to what Nathaniel said, because that is what we have been saying for um, since this investigation started, nobody is satisfied with the result. We don't know um, enough to make any kind of conclusions. And so that's where we need the help of this community. The case is open. We've assigned a new detective who's combed through all the evidence again. The, uh, the coroner has, has done a very thorough uh, investigation into all of the, the, the medical uh, piece of it that you know the coroner's office is responsible for. Um, we don't have satisfying answers. We're, it's a tragedy. It's a community tragedy. We feel horrible for the family. The um, the sisters are are closely involved with the meeting with the police department and our city manager. And we um, we are just asking anyone out there with any additional information to come forward. Thank you. Thank you. And I misstated earlier, we actually have five questions. Uh -huh. And this fifth question will go to Cheryl with a one minute response from you, Nathaniel. How do you answer citizen complaints that developments are being approved without consideration of the environmental impacts to our watersheds or timely notice to neighborhoods? What will you do to bring informed deliberation of environmental impacts and transparency to the development process? Uh, good question. It's something that we struggle with as a council and that we're not unique. Uh, it's, a, it's really everywhere. It's hard to get information out nowadays. We don't have necessarily a robust local newspaper anymore. People are getting their information in a lot of different ways. And so we're trying to be creative in our outreach so that when we do have uh, any kind of uh, issues that need to be brought forward to the public, that we're doing it in um, kind of a, a broad net across social media, uh, our printed newspaper, um, and other kinds of, most of it's online now. And so, uh, so it's, it's a constant struggle to bring our community along as we as we grow. Uh, that said, our environmental uh, restrictions around development, I think, are um, in keeping with uh, the environmental impacts and our, our low impact development regulations that were passed a couple of years ago are very stringent. And so uh, growth is hard and we are growing and and it's it's difficult to balance the needs of the existing community with, with the needs of the folks that are moving here. and. I wish I had a, you know, a good answer for you, but people are still going to be moving here. We're talking about um, climate refugees coming from Southern California and, and Arizona and other people getting pushed out of King County and Pierce County coming this direction. So I'm hopeful that with the, the growth management policies that we have in place that we can grow with grace and accept these folks within our existing infrastructure so that does lessen the impacts on our environment. Thank you. Nathaniel, one minute for a response. Thanks, it's a good question. I think it's important for people to know that Olympia's development standards uh, related to environmental concerns and neighborhood uh, involvement 
extend well below, beyond those that are required by the state. Some years ago, there was a, a failed proposal for a 7-Eleven at Harrison and Division. Following that uh, proposal, I was part of the council that changed our development requirements for environmental purposes and, and for a particularly neighborhood notification and involvement. Neighborhood involvement plans are required of developments, developers at this point as a result of those changes. Olympia goes beyond most communities in making sure that people are informed and involved. We can always do more. Uh, there are challenges in being able to reach out to members of our community and make sure that they know what's happening in their, in their neighborhood. Uh, we encourage people to engage with us and make sure that development meets our needs and suits our values. Thank you, Nathaniel. It is now time for closing statements. You will each have one minute for a closing, closing a statement. I will ask Nathaniel to go first since you went first on the opening statements. Nathaniel. Thanks, Annabelle. I'm running for mayor because I'm concerned about what I'm hearing from folks out uh, in their residences. I am doing a lot of doorbelling now. And as I do that, I hear that people are distressed on these three issues that are facing us. The negative impacts of homelessness, homelessness itself, and the skyrocketing cost of housing. These are areas that need a bold response. These are areas that we're not adequately addressing at this time. I've brought forward specific plans on how to make changes to our homeless response how to bring our community and our service providers to a whole new level of performance management. I also have proposals on how to deal with housing costs. I look for your vote on November 5th. We need to move forward with bold new ideas in order to bring Olympia to the point where we want to be. Cheryl. As your mayor, I'm practical, open-minded, optimistic, and collaborative. I bring strong leadership skills, a solid sense of community integrity, and a record of achievement to my role. As political dysfunction spreads across our country from DC, these qualities are more important than ever in local government. And that's why I'm running for re-election as mayor. I've consistently supported a well-trained police force and firefighters, excellent public services, climate action, and economic vitality for all. Communities can often get discouraged by difficult challenges like homelessness, but we must not lose sight of what makes Olympia great. Strong neighborhoods, thriving businesses, a vibrant art scene, and residents who work together with passion. After serving six years on council, I'm still energized by opportunities to bring us together to find solutions that make Olympia healthier, more inclusive, and environmentally resilient. I'd be honored to receive your vote on November 5th. Thank you. Thank you both for participating in the League of Women Voters uh, primary election forum uh, in the city council position of number one for mayor. Uh, we encourage viewers to vote in the general election. This is on November 5th. Remember, ballots are postage free, so just put it in the mail. The League particularly wants to thank Thurston Community Media for their ongoing support and assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.